Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm having computer issues. I, computers don't like me. So uh, I'm, I'm a little bit behind already. Yesterday, I had intended to record this yesterday, and it was a very rainy day with uh, thunder and lightning and high winds, and that means my internet is not great. Um, as I have said before, I'm in upstate New York out in the country, so yeah, it's a little iffy. Anyways, your assignment this week is to read chapter, t t the introduction and chapter one, and then to do the discussion, the journal, uh, a career assessment, and also a, a quiz. So I wanted to just take you through the things that you have to read, and let me minimize this for the moment okay so the the introduction basically you know it's welcome to FYE uh, I mentioned word choice and this is very important one of my pet peeves is students who use the word you in academic writing we use it in casual speech all the time and when we say you, we don't mean the person that we're addressing. We mean people in general. But in your writing for this class and for your other classes, you should not be using the word you unless you mean the person that you are writing to. Most of the time you're writing to me. And so because I'm the one who's reading your assignments and you're going to say something like, uh, you know, as what did I write? Um, if you go to the Howe Cavern, you will never forget your view of stalactites. And as I wrote in there, I am not, nah, -uh, no way am I going in a hole in the ground. I'm borderline claustrophobic, so I can't do it. What do you mean by you in this sentence, really? Maybe you're saying, when I went to Howe Cavern, I, I saw stalactites and I've never forgotten them. Or maybe you're making a general statement. You know, if people go to the Howe Caverns, they will never forget their view of stalactites. So I want you to be, you need to start thinking about who exactly you mean. Now, what you will notice is in what I've written, I use the word you because I am addressing you as the student. So it's not, this is not a case of um, do what I say, not what I do. I have very consciously chosen to use the word you. So when you use it, uh, if, if you think that I'm not sure, then put either put a note at the bottom of your assignment or after the first time you use it, you can put in parentheses, Professor Yao and I, I am addressing you. Okay, so and, uh, something that's really important is at the beginning of every chapter, I will ask you to do some basic assessment of yourself because my belief is the FYE course is starts with this is where you are, and then it's you know where you want to go. So if you know where you are and where you want to go, what do you have to do to get there? And I don't want to assume that everyone was a great student in high school or everyone was a terrible student in high school or all of us procrastinate. So <clears throat> I will ask you at the beginning of every chapter to do a very brief assessment by answering thinking about and answering a few questions just for yourself. You don't have to share this with other people. And I will also give you various, um, I, I will have a lot of assessments for you to take. I mean, you don't have to, but in the past, some students have told me they don't, they don't like assessments, that they don't find them very useful. And I'm never really sure why, because I'm asking you to answer questions about yourself. So it's not like going to a fortune teller who tells you, you know, based on the lines on your palm, this is something that's going to happen. Or, I mean, this is not like taking those BuzzFeed quizzes and finding out which Hogwarts house you belong in. You are answering questions about yourself, how you think, what you're interested in. And as long as you're aware that you do change and, and sometimes you'll get different results, that's fine. We just want to figure out where you are now. So at the end of the introduction, I have a handy guide to your first online semester in college. And I've given you five things that you should do. I came out a little loud, sorry. Five things that you should do your first week. And then I put it in green. I wanted it to stand out, but I'm not really sure. What do you think about the colors? 
I think it's a little too light. Okay. Um, and I never thought maybe somebody is uh, has colorblind. Okay. Uh, then what what are things that you should do your first month at Tunxis? And then last of all, what are things you should do your first semester at Tunxis? I am so open to suggestions. If you take a look at this and you say, you know what? Um, I put a little extra space there. If you say, I I think, Professor Yellen, you said this is what should be done the first week. And I think it could wait to the first uh, month because something that you put in the first month, I think, should be moved. That's great. As long as you are taking ownership for these things, uh, I, I'm all ears. I'd like to hear about it. Okay. So make sure you read the introduction. The, uh, yeah, don't save. Okay. The first chapter is all about the culture of campus and resources that we have. And so I start off by yee, four general questions. So I want you to think about why are you in college? Somebody, and I don't remember who, Mitchell, was it you, who said, I don't know why I'm here? Probably not. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm here because I know it's going to lead to a great career eventually. Mm. Jetham, I think you mentioned it also that you, you, you weren't really sure what you wanted to do, and you're seeing that college doesn't always lead to to a, a good career and more money. Okay, so think about it. Then, what are you looking forward to about college? What is it that you are unsure about when you think about college? And number four, I really like that. What does it mean to you to be an adult? So when I was a kid, I remember thinking. I can't wait to be an adult because then I can do anything I want to do. And I remember actually thinking I could play all day if I wanted to. Well, when I was thinking this at age five, I, I think I was, was thinking about wheeling my doll in a baby carriage. Or um, I was also, well, a very girly girl. I was a little tomboyish too. Um, I loved worms. Uh, I, I was thinking that I would have a little worm farm, you know, and I could just make worm structures all day. Okay, um, and I, I'm wondering now if being an adult means you can do whatever you want to do, or does being a, an adult mean you have a lot more responsibilities and you actually have less freedom? In any case, um, I didn't say here, but I grew up in Plainville. I'm sure some of you have heard of it, and we were very dismissive of Tunxis. We felt that uh, Tunxis was really just grade 13. In fact, when my brother, uh, my brother was going to go to college in, yep, Pittsburgh, no, Philadelphia, one of those P towns in Pennsylvania, he went for, he was accepted, he went for orientation, and after his orientation decided he didn't want to be in the city. Uh -huh. There's a whole story there. But um, he came back and my parents said, okay, fine, but you can't just sit around and do nothing. You need to go to college. And why don't you go to Tunxis? And he, Plainville, remember? And he said, oh, I'm not going to go to Tunxis. So every day he drove to Northwestern, which is in Winstead, every day, until he realized that that was kind of stupid. And he went to Tunxis, but just for a semester. And it's not an indictment of Tunxis. It's, that's just my brother, Pete. Okay. So what... I would like I would like to make the analogy that being in college your first semester and those of you who have been here a couple semesters can let me know if this is accurate is a lot like being in a, a foreign living in a in a culture that is not your own. So when I graduated from college I joined the Peace Corps and I went to West Africa to a country called Niger. I know people in the United States call it Niger, but the people in the country call it Niger, so that's what I will call it. And it was, I experienced culture shock. People spoke a different language, people interacted. People are people no, no matter where, but there are definitely certain things in the culture that are different when you move to a, another country. And so what you might notice is there are going to be some similarities uh, between your high school and Tunxis, and there are going to be some differences. And it's not necessarily better or worse. It's just different. Sometimes those differences, you'll say, wow, this is great. 
And other times those differences will actually make you angry. Like, why are you doing things differently? I, I knew what to expect in high school. And I don't, I don't like this sense that things are very different in college. So each of you is going to react differently. You might be looking forward to the differences, or you might be a little bit unsure because you know things are going to be different. So I just want you to, to, to go back to that idea that I said, it's not good or bad. It's just different. And okay. This is what I always ask my students to do in class. So what I want you to do is to cross your arms in front of you. I don't know. You know, like, hopefully you can see the camera. Okay. What hand is on top for you? For me, it's the right. So uncross them. Now I want you to cross them, but I want you to do it the opposite way. So you're going to cross for me. I'm okay. I got it. You got to, I'm going to cross it with the left hand on top. How does that feel? Most of you are going to say, it, most people will say it feels a little awkward. For some people, it's almost impossible. They're, they're going like that, trying to figure out how to do it. Okay. Is there any reason why you have to cross right over left or left over right? No, you're just used to doing it a certain way. And so when I ask you to do things differently, and I will ask you to do things differently than you've done them before, keep in your mind it's not necessarily bad it's just different and so it feels awkward okay uh, a brief word about FERPA FERPA is the uh, yep Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act which is very similar to you might be familiar with HIPAA in the medical profession where uh, nobody has the right to get your medical information unless you have given them permission. Same thing goes with your educational information. Even your parents do not have the right to this information. Now, you might want to share information. You, you might say to the college, it's okay for you to talk to my mom. And maybe me as a professor will say, okay, I don't mind talking to, I'm just drawing blanks on people's names. Um, I don't mind talking to Vanda's mom or I might say as a professor, she is not in my class. I will talk only to the students who are in my class. If your mother or father or grandmother or you know, legal guardian wants information about how you are doing, then they should talk to you. Now, I'm, I'm even on the fence about having conversations where the parents are involved. I, I, this is, to me, this is, a, this is an adult thing that you, you're not saying... You know, I don't I don't need people who are older than me to help me. But you are saying I am the person who is primarily responsible for this. Therefore, I'm the one who has to collect the information. And, you know, if you said um, I'd like to have my whoever there, I would ask. Well, okay, this is this is me giving you advice that you haven't even asked for. Um, ask them to be silent and have you do a lot of the talking. Sometimes uh, uh, parents have come in and I, I, in my experience, it is frequently mothers with their sons and I have a son and I think I would probably, I am tempted to do the same thing and they come in and they start talking. Oh, well, let's pick a, pick a name and uh, that no one in this class has. Uh, and uh, Jean-Luc has this question. And so I will turn to Jean-Luc and I say, okay, so tell me about, you know, I, I, I hear that you're, you're a little bit worried about math. Well, tell me a little bit about it. And then mom answers. Like mom is taking classes. Okay, so if you need your parent there for moral support, that's great. But remember that, that do a baby step. Ask them to wait in the hall or ask them to come in, but not ask questions until the end or, or whatever this is. OK, so that is one of the biggest differences that you're going to find between high school and college. Probably when you were in high school, you had is it called power school and your parents could log in and check your grades. I have to say, I don't know if, if I was stupid or if I am just an evolved human being. I never logged in and checked to see how my daughter was doing. I figured it was up to her and she knew I was there for support. Although I have to say both of my children who are now young adults are um, have at, at times said, I wish you weren't a college 
professor. Okay. Interacting with faculty is another big one. You might have been told in high school, oh, in college, people don't care about you. You're on your own. I hate that. Seriously, to, to say that the people who are teaching you don't care, it's so insulting. But we maybe care in a different way. Okay, so I was told once, see if I can get this right, a caring professor accepts no excuses, which means that I need to hold you to, to very high standards, reasonable, but, you know, or should they say high standards, but, but reasonable standards. Um, I'm, I'm going to guess that several of you in the class were involved in sports, and I would include cheerleading in there too. And I'm going to also guess that your coach held you to fairly high standards. Coach wanted you to do certain things. And, and you know, you said, oh, coach, I have a headache. I'm sure the coach gave you some variant of, I don't care. This is what you need to do. Um, I don't, I don't like the phrase, I don't care, but, uh, you know, I do care. I, I, I care very much. Um, and one of the ways that I show you that I care is by telling you this is work. Uh, sorry, there's someone, uh, this is the weekend. And so stu students, uh -huh, everyone's a student to me. People, uh, we, we're on a, they, a little bit farther down, we have a dirt road, and so people are riding their ATVs, and Saturdays and Sundays are very noisy. Okay, so back to this. I will tell you what is due and when things are due, and I am willing to, I can I can meet you in the um, my online office hours. I can have a conversation with you uh, via phone. I could text. We can email. My mental telepathy is not good, otherwise I would communicate with you telepathically, but there are a lot of ways for you to reach out to me so that I can help you. And because all of these resources are there, I expect that you will get your work done on time, and it's not going to be, pardon my language, I hope I don't offend anyone, I don't want it to be half-assed. I want it to be full-assed. I want you to do your best work. <clears throat> Now, from time to time, you will be overwhelmed because you will have work due in other classes. That is why I have given each of you a virtual green card, one, two of them. One, you can hand in an, an assignment late, and all you have to do is say, I'm handing in this assignment late because I was overwhelmed, because I completely forgot about it, because, I don't know, the dog ate my computer, whatever it is. Someone said, does it have to be a good excuse? Like, well, we'll talk about excuses and reasons later. Okay, point number two, the other green card is I will uh, give you a green card that allows you to skip an assignment. Your life has fallen apart. You don't want to do the discussion this week? Fine. Don't do it. You just green, just go into the discussion and say, or email me and say, I'm using the green card. Um, or, you know, I remember one student, there was a journal and he was stressing out about it and, and he just didn't want to write about that topic. And so he used the green card. And what happens is I give you 100 points or 20 points, whatever the assignment is worth, I give you full credit. Okay, so um, I, I don't use Facebook anymore, but when I did, I always said to my students, I will not be a friend of yours on Facebook during the semester. That seems to me to blur the line between... Um, am, am I your professor or am I your friend? Okay. So <clears throat> some of, and, and think about this for the, all of the classes that you're taking. Some of your professors are very, seem very open and warm and they're encouraging you to reach out. Other professors are very cut and dried. You might, you know, some of you are taking Elron classes. Some of you are completely online. How, so in your online classes, you might never see your professor at all. Everything is online. And, you know, traditional online, you don't see your professor. Professor never sees you. All the work is done online. And I know this is an online class, but that drives me nuts. So what I would actually like you to do, and I'll, I'll put this in a message, but it might be good to hear it also. I'd like you to send me uh, uh, respond to my message telling me when you could possibly log in so we could have a small group discussion. If I could get 
five to ten of you to log in. Let's say, you know, you say, okay, Tuesday's at 10 because that's when this class was supposed to be. Um, you can log in and you can, you can be there for a half an hour. Okay, great. Or, you know, you look at your schedule and you say, well, I've got on Mondays and Wednesdays, I've got a class at from 10 to 11.15 and then I don't have a class till 1. So anytime between 11.15 and 1. So I would say, okay, how about we'll do 11.45 to 12.15. <clears throat> I, I, I'm not going to mandate that you come. I'm not going to uh, take points off if you don't come. I'm not going to give you extra credit if you do come because this is an online class. So I can't you know, I can't do something like that, but I, I truly believe it'll make a better experience for all, for me and for you, if you can log in and talk with each other a little bit more. All right, this paragraph here, <clears throat> a lot of times, and I know you've all gone to different high schools and you've had different experiences, but frequently in, in high school, and I'll do some of this too, you're asked a question where there is one specific answer. You know, I don't know. Uh, what color is <laughs> the school bus? Okay, I don't know. Is it yellow? Is it orange? Okay, and that there's there's one answer. Other times there are questions that are much more open-ended. And so students sometimes feel like, well, if there's not one specific answer, then anything is is a valid answer. And that's not right either. So I am, I had a, um, when I was in the Peace Corps and I was teaching, uh, I had a colleague when the student would give an answer and it was incorrect, he would go, eh, and the students loved it. They thought that was really funny. I, just, I can't. To me, that's just, even though he did it in a joking way, I think that's, I can really get at someone's self-esteem. So let's say you, you, you write a journal and you are completely off base. I will not say, you're wrong, redo it. I will always try to, to at least comment on something that you did well and then steer you to um, a, a more answer that is slightly better targeted. It's more on target. So hold on. When I was uh, my freshman year in college, I took a creative writing course. <clears throat> now, as I said, I grew up in Plainville, <coughs> which... There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a little, little dull, maybe, a little provincial. And uh, the class that I took, the the writing, the creative writing class, one of the the professors was a very, it was a young hip dude from the Bronx, and so his experience and my experience were very different. And I was working on a play because at that time I went to college wanting to be a poet. Uh huh. I figured someone would pay me to sit in a room and write verse. Um, and then I realized that wasn't going to happen. So I, I <laughs> switched to writing plays. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm a slow learner. And um, I would write uh, an act and come in and, and sit down one on one with him. And he would say, people don't talk like that. You need to say this. And he would give me exactly what he wanted me to say. So I would dutifully revise with those exact words. And he really liked what I did. But I did not like what I did. So I will give you suggestions for how to improve. You are free to disregard them. But I, I have made suggestions because something is not right. So I will not tell you the language to use. But I will tell you where something is wrong and what you need to, to do about it. Okay, so that was... Burpa, office hours. I do have virtual office hours. Okay. Uh, attendance and, and participation is the net. Oh, wait. Let me, I'm skipping around too much. Uh, um, I have virtual office hours on Mondays from 1 to 2.30 and on Thursdays from 10 to 11.30, which means I'm, I'm sitting on the computer, I'm, I'm in Blackboard, and I'm waiting for people to come. I didn't really think anyone would show up on Thursday, but it's really discouraging. I'm sitting there alone and nobody comes and it reminds me of being in high school on a Friday night and no one asked me out on a date. No. Okay. So come if there's something that you want to talk about that's private and there are a bunch of people in the room, then you can just, you know, say hi, talk for a little bit and, and log out and then we can meet privately. Or you can have a, you know, that's the time to ask me questions about things that are probably not especially 
private. <clears throat> okay. Ah, uh, uh, attendance. We have to keep track of um, how people are, are attending or participating in class. This is m mostly because of students getting financial aid because the college has got to report to the feds since most of the money is federal money. Um, did people sign up for classes and then never attend? And if that's the case, like you, you, you're there the first week and then you disappear, either you have to pay that money back or you're, you're not going to get financial aid going forward. I mean, if you, if you start attending and then you withdraw, that's one thing. So I have to keep track of, gee, when did this, did this person, were they on at the beginning and they participated, you know, they, they, they handed in journals, they did discussions, they did the quizzes throughout the course. Great. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, participation in, in this online class is mostly if I'm thinking about if this were an on-ground class, your participation would be how much you ask questions in class. So that's going to be our discussions. So every week there's going to be a discussion. It's relatively informal, but you still need to use correct grammar and punctuation. You have to capitalize the letter I. Um, you should not be using profanity. Uh, you, you Just be a little more formal than you would be if you were texting somebody. Okay, so <clears throat> another way of encouraging um, attendance or participation is by quizzes, and we will have a quiz every week. So what else do I have to tell you? Homework. Uh, the, everyone, every, each of your classes is going to be slightly different in terms of homework in FYE. Um, I have very specific homework that I assign you and very specific due dates if you're taking a, a writing class you're taking 096 093 101 101e you you're going to realize that you you have work that you do but the major grade you it comes at the very end of class when you put your portfolio together um, I know it, some math classes uh, they will assign homework but they won't they don't well, they don't collect it because it's all done on, on my math lab, but they're not necessarily, they're just kind of checking to see whether, whether you've done it. It, it, like whether you got a, now I'm, I'm saying this and I'm thinking it's not true for some classes. It doesn't matter what, whether you got a 70 or a hundred, they're just checking it off as a done, not done. And other classes they're saying, okay, this homework, you know, if you got a 70, I'm calculating the 70 into your grade. If you got a hundred, I'm calculating a hundred into your grade. So just make sure you find out in every single class you're in what your professor expects of you in terms of participation, in terms of homework. Okay, so I ask a bunch of questions at the end. All right, what do you want your college experience to be like? What kind of a relationship do you want to have with your professors? What, how will, what will you do to push yourself? You know what's comfortable. Crossing your arms, ooh, crossing your arms. I have no idea which way I cross my arms. You know, crossing your arms a certain way. So how are you going to try something new? All right. Um, what support system do you have? That, what is going to help you be the best student that you can be? And if you are thinking your support system is not very good, what are you going to do? And that... The next section talks about campus resources, but I am going to pause here because this is a long recording and I will do another recording. And...